In this video, I'll be briefly explaining the two types of lasers that make up the majority of consumer laser pointers and laser modules. The first type of lasers are direct diode lasers. These units are fairly straightforward. A laser diode directly converts electric energy into light. The choice of the semiconductor material determines the wavelength or color of the emitted beam, which can range from the ultraviolet to the infrared spectrum. The second type of lasers are diode-pumped solid-state lasers, also referred to as DPSS lasers. These units are more complex, using a laser diode to pump light through crystals, also referred to as gain media, to get the final wavelength desired. In the case of the very common 532 nanometer green DPSS lasers, an 808 nanometer diode is pumped through a crystal and converted to 1064 nanometers, which passes through another crystal that cuts the wavelength in half, resulting in a 532 nanometer beam. DPSS lasers are generally more temperature dependent, operating at peak efficiency over a small temperature range. DPSS lasers are also much more inefficient as the process of pumping the light through the crystals greatly reduces the output. DPSS blue and yellow lasers, such as 473 nanometer blue or 589 nanometer yellow, typically hold very low efficiencies below 5%, meaning a 1 watt pump diode will pass through the crystals and produce a beam that may only be 20 milliwatts, or 1 50th of a watt. The internal workings of a DPSS laser require more space inside a host when compared to a direct diode laser of the same output power. For the most part, DPSS lasers will emit a tighter, more circular beam when compared to the beams of direct diode lasers, which are usually wider and more rectangular in shape. So you might be asking yourself, why not just build all consumer lasers as direct diode instead of DPSS, given that DPSS have these inefficiencies, are more temperature sensitive, and take up more space in a host? As I've previously discussed, all light visible to the human eye exists between the wavelengths of 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. However, scientists have only developed laser diodes in some of the visible wavelengths. Certain wavelengths, such as the yellow range, have proved difficult and expensive to develop diodes in. This is where DPSS lasers come into play. The DPSS process allows us to build lasers that emit wavelengths that there are currently no diodes available to directly produce. I hope this video helps give a very brief overview of both direct diode and DPSS lasers. If you found this video helpful in any way at all, hit that like button below. And if you're new to my channel and you'd like to see more laser content just like this, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.